in this unit of understanding polynatrials, we are going to see first about polynomials. Then let us go about seeing the types of polynomials. Then we learn about diagonals. Then let us learn about regular and irregular polygons. Then finally let us learn about few laws of polygons. So now let's start. So the first thing is polygons. So what is a polygon? A polygon is a simple closed closed curve with only lines. This is the definition for polygon. Now let us understand what this. This definition means a polygon is a simple closed curve with only lines. So a simple closed curve means something which is closed. Like for example, this. This is a simple closed curve. But a polygon is a simple closed curve with only lines. So this is a smooth curve. This doesn't contain any lines. So a polygon is something which has only lines. For example, like this. This is a polygon because it is a closed figure and it is only made of lines. These are lines and this is only made of lines. A polygon has to be only closed and it shouldn't be open. For example, this cannot be considered as a polygon. Though this polygon is closed here, but this polygon is open in this side. That is, the bottom is closed and the top is open. Therefore, a polygon cannot be open at any ways. So, a polygon is, should be only closed and should not be open at any side. Now, let us go about seeing what is the diagonal for a polygon. Diagonal of a polygon. So what does a diagonal mean? A diagonal is a line segment joining two non-consecutive vertex of a polygon. That is, the diagonal is a line segment joining Two non consecutive points in a polygon. So, this is a definition of a diagonal. Now, a diagonal is a line segment joining two non consecutive points in a polygon. So, now let us see what is a diagonal means. Let us take a rectangle for example. This is a rectangle and a diagonal is a line segment that is you draw a line joining two non-consecutive points. A non-consecutive points means two points which are not nearer. That is if you take this point and this point, these two points are nearer to each other. So these are consecutive points or these are also known as points that are nearer. So a diagonal is something which has to be drawn between two non-consecutive points. In this figure, the, if you consider from this point, this point is nearer to this point and this point is nearer to this point. But this point is very far away from this point. So, you draw a line segment from this point to this point. Now, this is one diagonal of the rectangle. And the other diagonal would be from here. You start from this point and the final point is this. So, this is the next diagonal. So, a rectangle has two diagonal and therefore there are two rectangles for the diagonal and the point at which these two diagonals meet that is this point is the midpoint. 
of the rectangle. So a diagonal is a non is a, so a diagonal is a line segment which joins two consecutive points or vertex in a polygon. A vertex is also this. The point is also known as a vertex. Now let's see how to draw a diagonal for a pentagon. Now consider this pentagon for example. You have to draw a diagonal for this pentagon. So as the definition says, you will have to draw the line segment from for two non consecutive points. Now for this point, that is, now starting from this point, start drawing uh, line segments that are diagonals. From this point, this point is also farther and this point is also farther. So you draw a line segment from this point to this point and also from this point to this point. Similarly, when you consider this point, this point is also farther and this point is also farther. So you join a line segment from this point and a line segment from this point as well. So therefore, these points are also diagonal. It is not the rule that from one point only one diagonal has to go. There can be uh, one or more number of points or diagonals that can go from a point. So that is the diagonal because in this figure there are two far away points and only one could be considered as a diagonal. Now let us go about seeing the types of polygons. Now the next thing you people have to know is what is a regular and the irregular polygons. So you might have heard about equilateral polygons or equilateral and equiangular. Let me write you those. Equilateral and equiangular. So to understand what is a regular and the irregular polygons, you will have to know what is the equilateral and equiangular terms means. So a uh, equilateral means when all sides are equal and equiangular means when all angles are equal. That is equiangular is This is easier to remember because equi means equal and angular is the angles that are equal. So equilateral means the sides that are equal. Similarly, to understand all the regular and irregular polygon, equilateral and equiangular has to be known. Now let us see what the regular and irregular polygons are. Now that uh, equilateral and equiangular are clearer, so let us see what is a regular and irregular polygon. A regular polygon is a regular polygon is one in which which are equilateral and equiangular. And what is an irregular polygon? Irregular polygon could be equilateral or equiangular. Irregular polygons could be equilateral or equiangular. So, a uh, regular polygon which is which is equilateral and equiangular, that is, all the angles and the sides should be equal, then you call the polygon to be equilateral or uh, and equiangular. Therefore, it is a regular polygon. So, a irregular polygon is which in which either it is equilateral or equiangular, that is, it could be equilateral or, or it could be equiangular. And so, such type of polygons are called as irregular polygons. So, now let us see what are irregular polygons and regular polygons. Now let us consider a triangle for example. Now let us assume that all the angles for this triangle are equal. That is, this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle. So all these three angles are equal. And now let us see the sides. This side should be equal to this side and it is also equal to this side. And this type of symbols, that is, symbols like this and symbols like single dash on the line segments are known to compare that two sides are equal. So therefore this line is equal to this line and is equal to this line. 
so that is what this means and the angles are also equal so this triangle is said to be a regular triangle or a regular polygon and now let us see a irregular polygon a irregular polygon is something in which it is equilateral or equiangular so let me consider a rectangle for this example in this rectangle all the angles are equal to 90 degree that is all the angles are equal that is this angle is equal this angle is equal this angle is equal this angle is equal so all four angles are equal and all these four angles are equal to 90 degree but whereas this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side so these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal but all the four sides are not equal therefore it is only equi angular but not equilateral therefore the condition for regular polygon is not satisfied therefore a rectangle is a irregular polygon or example for irregular polygon now a regular polygon is in one uh, now a regular polygon is one in which it is equilateral and equiangular for example this triangle is shown and a irregular polygon is which it is equilateral or equiangular and this rectangle is shown now let us study about the law laws of polygon laws of polygon are also known as properties of polygon now let us go about seeing the first property or the important property of a polygon is angle sum property you might have studied in the previous classes that the interior angle for a triangle that is a three sided polygon a three sided polygon is also known as a triangle so you might have studied in the previous class that the interior angle for the triangle the sum of all three interior angles for the triangle is equal to 180 degree that is this angle plus this angle plus this angle now let us name this triangle as a b and c so the interior angle sum that is angle a plus angle b plus angle c is equal to 180 degree so this is a law which holds good for all the types of triangles now the law of polygon says that the interior angle for all the polygon with a specific set of sides are said to be equal that is you can also find the interior angles for a rectangle so for this rectangle the interior angle is for this rectangle the interior angle is 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 so 90 into 4 would give you 360 so the interior angle for this rectangle is 360 but let us consider a quadrilateral that is any shape which has four sides so so for any quadrilateral with four sides A quadrilateral means which has four shape. A, a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides or four lines. So for any quadrilateral, the interior angle sum will be equal to 360 degree. So now to find the interior angle sum for any polygon, there is a generalized method to find. So let us see what is the generalized method is. Consider this triangle. Now this rectangle could be divided into two triangles that is this triangle plus this triangle so the angle sum for one triangle is 180 degree so 180 degree plus 180 degree will give you 360 degree that is two sum of triangles would give you a rectangle and the angle of two rectangles is 180, is 180 plus 180 which is equal to 360 degree let us generalize it now any number of shape given to find the interior sum So, for the interior sum, for the interior angle sum is given by x minus 2 into 180. This formula can be used to find the interior angle sum for any number of polygons or any number of lines a polygon has. Now, let us take a pentagon. A pentagon is a polygon which has 5 sides. 
So for a five sided pentagon, the just replace the value of x with the number of sides. So for a pentagon it is five sides. So five minus two into one eighty degree. So five minus two would give you three into one eighty degree. So three into one eighty degree would give you. So for a five sided figure or a pentagon which has five sides, the interior angle sum is five forty degree. Now let us see how is it is this thing. Valuable or valid for a quadrilateral also. Now a quadrilateral has four sides. So for a quadrilateral of four sides, four minus two. That is, I have replaced the value of x with four. So four minus two into one eighty. So now four minus two would give me two into one eighty degree, which is equal to three sixty degree. So this also proves for a quadrilateral. Therefore, so this equation could be used to find interior sum angle for any polygon by just replacing the value of x with the number of sides of the polygon, and then you get the interior angle sum.